Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to the next video in the restoration series of the Grunig 2147. It's been a bit of a, quite some time actually since I uh, actually touched it because I've been doing the detailed descriptions of my version of the detailed descriptions of the circuit workings. Now, um, it's getting kind of lonely sitting at the back there, but uh, we're going to get to it very, very soon. I want to just complete this uh, trend. I promise you it's the last one, the last video with a lot of, uh, you know, schematics and stuff. <laughs> I'm going to do the description of the RF alignment, why we do it, how we do it, and then I'll be doing it on the radio itself so we can get this thing completed. I really am anxious to get this one off the, off the bench, as you can imagine. But something I just want to mention here, the circuit descriptions that I'm giving are my understanding of how these circuits work based on the restorations I've done, the analysis I've done, the reading I've done. I am not a tube radio engineer. My background is electronic engineering. It's my hobby. I uh, finished my degree, never worked in it, never worked in the field actually, but I kept it as a hobby. So I really enjoy learning new things, as you probably figured if you watch this channel. And this is another way of me sort of cementing what I've learned. And obviously there may be some errors in there. I hope not. But um, in explaining how this works, I get to learn how it works as well, or rather sort of cemented in my skull at the same time. And I enjoy that sort of thing. Hope you do too. Now, what I want to tell you about this one is I'm going to do the uh, quick description on the RF alignment, the front end alignment, and then I'm going to do the alignment itself. But before I do that, I want to draw your attention to a uh, forum on uh, Radio Museum. I'm going to put the link below. Now, what it is, it's called the circuitry analysis for the Grundig 5040W slash 3D. Now, that 5040 is an iconic radio from the 50s. It's, I think, one of the first ones that came out with a 3D sound, sort of a stereo effect. That's what they wanted to do. Um, and somebody has gone and described the workings of that circuit in incredible, incredible detail. Uh, the gentleman is Hans Martin Knoll, I believe. I hope I've pronounced that right. But it is going to be linked below. And if you are in any way serious about understanding this, go and read it. Now, if you're not familiar with tube radios just yet, you know, if you're starting, go and try and read it, <laughs> because you won't get it the first time around, I guarantee you. Uh, if you do, you're a genius, or you're experienced. It's taken me a few readings to really understand what they're saying. Uh, it helps when you have the, the uh, let's call it the vocabulary of, of a background in electronics, or or education in electronics, but it is incredibly, incredibly detailed. And it's in English. So someone has taken Mr. Knoll's description in the German side of the forum and translated it into English. And they go into component level analysis of that circuit. It's a full FM AM radio. And believe me, every time I go back and do some research, because it's become a sort of a a research uh, source for me, I learn new things. So do yourself a favor, try and read it and try again. And when you learn some more stuff, you go back and read it again and you think, ah, yeah, that's where that comes in. You know, that's where I saw that circuit on that radio. And it all starts making more sense. And as I said, it's quite heavy, but it is incredibly detailed and incredibly valuable. And this sort of information is just disappearing just like the radios are. So, hey, contribute to keep these things going. Right, let me carry on. Let me show you the uh, description of the RF uh, front-end alignment, and then we'll do that. And then I think we'll be ready to just give it a final test before I put it in the chassis and uh, consider this project done. Stick around if you're interested in that. What I'm going to do first, before I go any further, is to eliminate all the parts of the circuit that we are not interested in. We're only interested in looking at the uh, front end and oscillator section of the AM bands. So let's do that first. And that's it. Now, if we look at this, we've got two external signals coming in here that have been highlighted. One of them is the AGC. The AGC is a signal that comes through here. It's a DC voltage, negative, comes down here, along here, up there, up there, 
and it goes to the grid of the tube. So it's obviously serving as a variable bias of the tube, and it's a variable bias because depending on how strong the signal is, it'll be more negative or less negative, and that'll regulate the gain of this tube as well. And the other one is the B+, plus, which goes to the respective points over on the, uh, on the tube itself. Other than that, we can sort of ignore those signals for now. They don't uh, play a role in the description of the alignment that we need to do. And the first part of the alignment we're going to do is for medium wave. We can go one step further with our uh, simplification of the schematic, and that is we can erase everything that has nothing to do with the medium wave uh, band, both on the front end and on the uh, local oscillator, like that. Simplified it somewhat, so let's take this uh, one step at a time. They tell us to, before we start, ensure that the pointer is on 510 kilohertz with the tuning condenser fully meshed. Now that means you tune your tuning condenser all the way to the right. There's actually an indication of 510 on the dial. You can see that. So you make sure that your pointer is on that point. And if it is not, you can physically move it slightly left or slightly right by adjusting the position of the pointer on the, on the dial cords. So that's out of the way. That's going to apply to all the bands. Now let's look at medium wave. What do they tell us to do? Well, they tell us to tune to 560 kilohertz. Now, 560 kilohertz is just slightly to the left of that. In other words, the tuning condenser was fully meshed up here. It is slightly or nearly fully meshed here, okay? And then they tell us to adjust one and adjust two. Well, what does that mean? Well, what it means is you feed a signal into your antenna of 560 kilohertz, a carrier, and you modulate it with an audible tone. So that tone is what your radio station is transmitting at 560 kilohertz, okay? That signal's coming down here, in here, in here, and it goes to this front end tank circuit. And this front end tank circuit is responsible for tuning in to that 560 kilohertz, okay? That'll go into your tube over there. But then you've got this circuit over here, which is your oscillator, your local oscillator. And that too is a tank circuit. If you look at that circuit here, that is one, and there's your tuning condenser. So when they tell you to adjust one, what they mean is, you know, you're listening to that tone coming through on your speakers when you've set the dial to 560 kilohertz. You should hear it. If you don't hear it, there's another method you can use. You, you find it, and then you sort of drag it. Uh, I'll describe it when, when we do it. But you ensure that, that this adjustment of one, of this coil, brings that tone to its peak at that position of the dial. So you've set the dial to 560, and you make sure with this guy that this local oscillator is tuned optimally to receive the signal at 560 kilohertz. And what you're doing is you're basically adjusting this frequency to 560 plus the IF frequency, which in this case is 460. So you're adjusting it to 1,020 hertz, uh, kilohertz. So that 1,020 kilohertz, subtracting the 460, will tune whatever is at that point, right, at 560 in the front end. So you should hear your tone optimally here, and you adjust that one. Then what you've got to do is you've got to go to the front end and you've got to adjust this circuit. Now, the reason you adjust a coil is because your tuning capacitor, this one over here, which is a 418 picofarad tuning capacitor, is almost fully meshed. So you don't have much leeway to sort of adjust that, okay? You've already tuned that. That's the one you're messing with. This one you can adjust and you do adjust it so that you tune in properly. At this end, you've got a similar situation. This tuned circuit over here, between that part of the tuning condenser and that coil, too, is making sure that the 560 that you're trying to listen to is actually what this thing is tuned to. If this thing is tuned to 550, okay, part of the signal will still get through to your front end. In other words, it, at 560, which is what you're trying to pick up with this guy, with the local oscillator, you're going to pick up part of that signal. It might not be optimally tuned because this thing is less critical at the front end than it is on the oscillator. 
Your oscillator actually sets what you listen to. This one makes sure that what you're trying to listen to is there. That's what you're doing with this guy. And then you do the same thing. You adjust this one so that that signal comes through as loud as possible. And effectively what you've done is you've aligned the front end and the local oscillator to pick up the signal at of 560 at 560 on the dial. That's what you've done for a start. The other instruction says tune to 1450 and adjust 3 and 4. Okay, now 1450 means your tuning condenser is practically wide open. So the capacitance is at its minimum and they say adjust 3 and 4. So what do you do? What you're doing then is you're setting your tuning condenser. You're tuning your tuning condenser over here almost to zero. It won't quite go to zero because these tuning condensers, even when they're fully unmeshed, they've got some capacitance. I think I've measured about 15 picofarads or 20 picofarads or 10 picofarads. But you're tuning down to the bottom end of the tuning condenser, which also relates to the highest frequency that it is producing in this tank circuit. Now remember, this guy's fixed now. That one's fixed, okay? So you are tuning down at the bottom, getting this to the minimum frequency that it can go to. Well, what you want to do is actually make this go down to the point where you pick up 1450 at the front. And this tuning condenser is tuned such that your pointer is at 1450, okay? You're sending a signal in through the antenna at 1450 with a tone on it, and you want to hear it, okay? At 1450 on the dial. So you put this on the dial. Now what you need to do is they say you adjust 3 and 4. Now why do you adjust 3 and 4? Well you adjust 3 and 4 because you tuned the top end with that guy when your tuning condenser was a minimum. Now you've got this thing down, well, it was a maximum, beg your pardon. Now this thing is down to a minimum and the only way to go lower is by having this, this one adjusted. It won't go below zero but what's happening is this is never zero. This tank circuit, the, the sum of these capacitances is never zero. It's made that way. It's actually designed so that this together, this uh, parasitic or this residual, residual capacitance, even when it's down at the bottom, plus, remember in parallel, whatever capacitance you have on this thing, which is a trimmer from 3 to 30, let's call it 15 in the middle, right? Let's say that that's 10 or 20, 20, and that's 15. You've got 35. This circuit is designed so that at 35, you sort of down to 1450, okay? So the only thing you can change if you've got this thing at a minimum is this one. You can reduce that capacitance. And that's why they say adjust 3 to get the signal to come in at 1450, right? So that's to get it at the uh, maximum uh, top end of the maximum capacitance. This thing is to reduce the minimum capacitance. And you're trying to increase or adjust the higher frequency. So you adjust three till your signal's coming through, and then you've got to do the corresponding one over here. And this one over here is four, which is that tuning capacitor. Again, you are reducing the minimum that the sum of these two capacitors, this one and this one, can reach. So you adjust that one so that it picks up optimally, it tunes optimally to one to 1450. Because remember, this guy's not tuning actually to 1450. This thing's tuning to 1450 plus 460. So it's 1910 actually. This thing's actually tuning 1910 because it adds the higher frequency. So when you've optimized this one, you've now tuned to the right position on the dial uh, so that 1450 comes through at 1450. But what have you done now? Well, you sort of you sort of messed up a few things, right? Because remember. When you set this guy here 1, this capacitor was fully meshed, right? So there was 418 picofarads, but it was more than that. There was actually more than 418 picofarads. There was 418 picofarads plus whatever was on this trimmer. Now you've gone and messed with this trimmer. So when you go back to uh, 560, it's possibly not going to be there because your conditions have changed. This capacitor has been tuned to the right position, but this one had, was changed. And the capacitance of this tank circuit is the sum of these two. So that means you then have to readjust that guy at 560 kilohertz and that guy at 560 kilohertz 
to get the optimum result. Now, if you readjust this a little bit and that one a little bit, what happens when you go back to 1450? Well, hey, you tune these two caps to give you an optimal frequency at 1450, optimum alignment. But now you've sort of realigned that one a little bit. So you then have to do this one a little bit. So this is an iterative process. You fix it at 560 on front end and the local oscillator. Then you go to 1450 and you adjust your trimmers at 1450, both on the local oscillator and the front end. Then you go back to 560 and you go back to 1450. And you do that a few times till the process works to the point where you don't get any, it's basically diminishing returns. You get to a point where it's there, you know. Sometimes you get it right the first time, uh, but sometimes you do need to go back a couple of times. And that's what you are doing when you're adjusting these, uh, these coils. Now that was for medium wave but we've got two more bands to do. Now, just like we did for the medium wave, we can go and get rid of all the circuitry that doesn't relate to the next band, which is long wave. Now, long wave is actually simpler because they tell you to tune to 160 kilohertz and adjust five and six. There is actually a little point, a little marker on the dial at 160 kilohertz, which gives you a reference point. And you don't have a top end and bottom end, you just have one position that you tune to, and you sort of relying that the circuit is well designed and set up so that it doesn't really affect what you're doing. And when they say adjust five and six, that's exactly what you're doing. You're adjusting this one here. Now this one is in, in, in uh, series with one. That tells you something. It tells you that you have to align in this order. You have to align medium wave first before you align long wave because whatever you've set here could affect long wave, especially on the uh, well, the lower the higher frequencies of long wave. So you align this in the order they give you and what you're doing is you're just aligning coil 5 to get the local oscillator right and then you have to align 6 which is this guy over here to get the front end right. And other than that there's not much to talk about. It's, it's pretty simple. It's pretty much the same as uh, what you did with, um, with medium wave. And the same can actually be said for short wave. Let's look at it. Well, with short wave, they just tell you to tune to 6.5 megahertz. And here we are. We've got the same situation as we had before, where we have to tune one end and the other. And we tune to 6.5 megahertz and adjust 7 and 8. And there's 7. And there is, where's eight? Where are you? There's eight. Now remember, some of the circuitry is changed somewhat by the switching that uh, shortwave brings in. So you adjust the uh, local oscillator at seven, and you adjust the, um, remember this is a coil, and you adjust eight, which is a coil as well, okay, for the front end. And then you tune to 14 megahertz, and you adjust nine and 10. So at 14 megahertz, you're again adjusting the capacitors. And again, we're talking about the same tank circuit that includes that capacitor there, okay? It's just a tank circuit that's spread out a bit here, but it's that capacitor in conjunction with this inductor and that capacitor, which is adding to that one. Same as the medium wave. Now, what you do then is you adjust the minimum value of capacitance at 14 megahertz, so you adjust nine, and you do the same over here, 10. Remember you adjusted eight, which is that guy there, and that's in parallel with this guy here, which is uh, this little trimmer that you're adjusting now, which happens to be in parallel with that part of the tuning con condenser. So that's what you're doing. You adjust that condenser there and you would tune the front end. And in this case, you do have to go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, whatever times it takes, you'll see yourself. So I think that's enough description. I want to set this up so I can do this uh, alignment uh, physically and we'll see how we are and we'll see how we go. We'll start off by uh, setting this to the absolute right. So it's on the 510 over there. Then I'll set the signal generator to 560. I'm sending a 4 millivolt RMS. I can make that smaller. We'll see how we go. I've got modulation on, 30% modulation, AM modulation of a 600 hertz tone. That is on. That's going to the switchable attenuator. At the moment, I've got no attenuation, but I do have the dummy antenna activated. That then just goes to the uh, external antenna input. 
So I think maybe we've got everything in the shot here. I have uh, got this on AC volts. It's on the minimum level. And at the moment, I've got nothing there, so I'm going to tune to 560. Bloody hell. It's exactly on 560. But for the sake of uh, demonstration, I'm using this guy, put it in, make sure I've got the right spot. Okay, it's in there. It's off. There it is, exactly at 560. So that one's done. Now we've got to do the antenna. And I'll pull that up. Now for the antenna, it tells us to adjust these two here. And I'm not sure exactly what they mean, whether they mean move it apart or move it along. So I'll try and move it apart first. Let's give that a very visible level and I'll have to do it with something non-conductive. Nope. Whoa. That's definitely a peak. Pretty hell. Well, that's peaked to there. So now We've got to tune this to 1450, set this guy to 1450. Put the modulation on. Go to 1450 over here. There's another little mark on there. It's just off. I'll put it exactly on 1450. Now we have to adjust 3 and 4. Now this is one of those funny caps. I'm not sure what I can use to adjust this. Try this guy. Okay. That went quite well. And four. this guy at the top here. That's exactly right. So again, conductive uh, screwdriver. I don't have a non-conductive pliers, obviously. I think that's it. Yep. So now I'll set it again to 560 and tune to 560. It's moved a little bit. So I'll set it to 560 exactly. Here it is. And we'll try these guys again. No, that's perfectly fine over there. Back to 1450. Again, it's a bit early. It is. And at the 
Top. That seems to be a peak. Okay. 560 again. Yeah, it's there. So we've done our AM, uh, medium wave. Now we've got to do long wave. And with long wave, we put this on 160 kilohertz. And 160 and five and six. So five is this guy over here. No, actually, it's this guy over here. Got to get rid of the wax. Okay, it's not too much. Okay, tune to 160. Where's 160? You know what? It's pretty much there. Let me give it a bit more. The noise is actually stronger than the signal. You know, it's right there. Oscillator doesn't need tuning. This thing might, because this thing was the one I rebuilt. Oh yeah. I realize I'm doing this by ear because I couldn't even see that. That sounds perfect. Okay, let's set this up for shortwave. So 6.5 megahertz. Whoa, that's far too strong. Just a little bit out. I'll put it on 6.5. I think I'm still getting the wax out of the way. I haven't got this in yet. Well, this is where you get stuck, and I'll explain. Getting to that guy there is proving a nightmare. And this thing is, this is the sort of thing I've had before, and I know what, how it ends. It ends badly. It ends with me cracking something, because I can't get all the wax out in time, or properly. And I know that if I force it, I'm going to do some damage. Now, this thing is out by about half a millimeter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it there. I'm just going to pick the antenna at that point. So that's where it's peaked. And I'm going to pick the antenna coil. I'm not going to force this guy. I just know what happens. And eight is over. Where is eight?
Oh, damn. Nope, I'm not going to do it. Eight is inside the can. And I'm not going to take the can out. Definitely not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it there. It's close enough. I'm not going to mess with that can. Sometimes you just got to make these calls. The next one, 14 megahertz. Let's see if we have more luck with that. See where it is. It's just slightly off again. Almost by the same amount as that one. In fact, it's exactly off by the same amount as that one. Almost the play that this display could have. Hmm. Let's see where 9 and 10 are. Okay, 9 is very accessible. Where's 10? And so is 10. So let's see if we can do it. 9. Now here you've got to be very careful. Metal screwdriver, metal pliers going in there. Yeah, it's gone in the right direction, but it stops when I touch it, so I have to do it like this. I'm just listening to it right now. I want to go to the right, so I'll do a bit more. See if I've got it. Yeah, it's going in the right direction, but just touching it a little bit at a time. Yep. It's moving in the right direction. That's perfect. That's on 14. Now the antenna one is here. And I think I'm right to say that this is ground, so I shouldn't have a problem with this. When I say this is ground, it means the, the, the part of the, the top of the cap is ground. No, that's about peaked. That is peaked. And I believe I've done the uh, RF alignment with one exception, that 6.5 uh, megahertz, which I'll check again. See if it's made any difference to where it is. It's just a little bit to the left, but I don't want to mess up those uh, that core. Definitely don't want to mess up that core, and I don't want to open that FM front end. So this is the way it is. It's actually fairly strong, the signal, the same as the one uh, as it was getting at on uh, 14 megahertz. So let's have a quick check and see what we're getting. I'll take this to the mini whip. Let's see if we've got anything on shortwave. Noisy time of day, but we're just supposed to. Of course not. 
Yeah, not bad. For this time of day, don't expect much else. Medium wave. Oh, that's lively. That's Canary Islands. Ha! This is brilliant. Medium wave is really strong. Long wave. There's our beacon. It's quieter at night, Best, better signal. That's brilliant. I think it's done. I think it is done. All right. Well, folks, I'm going to uh, take a break now and then do the FM alignment, front end alignment, RF alignment. Uh, after uh, a little bit of an explanation about how that, how that works. So I'm going to leave you for now. Uh, I'm sorry it's been a, a little while since my last video, but uh, with all the Christmas holidays and everything else, I decided to take some time off as well. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And uh, hope to see you back again soon for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.